What's good? It's your boy 2K here. Shout out to the movement and everybody who's moving with us. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and check out the website 3kingsboxing.com, which is actually taking up a lot of my time. I haven't forgot about my supporters. I appreciate everybody who supports the Prodigy of Boxing Talk and everyone who is supporting the movement as well. And speaking of the movement, my man Big Cool from Colossal Boxing Talk, I got an image of his channel up right here. He caught up with Andre Durrell, the IBF interim 168-pound champion, who will be fighting in a rematch, a very dangerous rematch, I might add, Jose Uzcategui on the undercard of Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz on March 3rd. We were able to catch up with him. We were able to get him to uh, to give us some, some background of his training camp. Um, he talked about his last fight with Uzcategui. And he also gave us a little bit of a rundown of the 168-pound landscape. So without further ado, go ahead and tune in. Also, if you haven't already, check out my man Big Cool, his channel Colossal Boxing Talk, Real Boxing Knowledge, man. I handpicked these cats, you know what I'm saying? So if you like me, you're going to like the cats I handpicked for the movement. All right? Check my boy out. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Boxing Talk. I'm here with my boy, 2K, from the Prod Prodigy of Boxing Talk. Excuse me. This is a, a, an interview we're doing with Andre, the Matrix, the real. As you know, Colossal Boxing Talk and Prodigy of, Prodigy of Boxing is associated with Three Kings Boxing under the movement umbrella. We're here again with special guest, Andre, the Matrix, the real, the uh, super middleweight IBF interim champion. How you doing today, champ? I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain, man. Having a great camp. Okay, okay. Uh, to start it off, how's your mindset going into this rematch, man? Because we all seen what happened uh, in May. Right. It seemed like you was coming on in that fight, and then at the end of the eighth round, uh, Ukatage caught you with a three-punch combination. Seemed to, uh, you know, hurt you badly. Uh, what was your uh, What's your mindset going into this rematch? Um... I was prepared two weeks ago, man, three weeks ago, man. I was really ready. And I'm talking mentally. Um, uh, there's always things fighters need to work on. And uh, there's a few things that in my arsenal that we're um, perfecting, uh, not changing up, but perfecting, uh, meaning Virgil and I, um, with my game. And um, um, by the end of next week, man, you guys see what it's all about. So I'm really, really amped about this situation, man. Mentally, I'm more focused than ever, and I really can't wait to show my uh, display my talent. Okay, okay. Another question. Um, I know as a fighter, you know, you don't really look back into the past, but do you feel that uh, uh, maybe joining Virgil a uh, hunter sooner, in your early, in your, a little bit in your career would have did, you know, would have helped you, you know, different fights, maybe the James the Gale fight or. Do you just think this is the perfect time to uh, join up with uh, Virgil Hunter in this moment in your career? I mean, you're really right, man. There's no need to bring up the past. There's nothing back there for me to gain. You know, um, I'm here now. Uh, it's a blessing to be here now. He's picking up where my grandfather left off, and I believe we'll still sharpen my skills like I need him to be. All right, 2K. All right, so you're the IBF interim champion. We're going to get to a little bit of the fuckery of this show. <laughs> so, you know, there's some, you, know yeah. you know there's some food at 168, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. I, I know, I know I you know day. who I'm talking about. And uh, he's a good guy, by the way, you know, but this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? We talk about everybody, and we're brutally honest. Um, Caleb mm. Truex is a, is a pretty good fighter. I give him 100% credit for beating James DeGale. I remember when we mm -hmm. we interviewed you last year, there was a, a few things that you expressed. One was getting that rematch with James DeGale. You really wanted that. Um, also, mm -hmm. you said that you wanted to be, in the next two years, a two-time champion uh, within the yeah. division. Well, you, you might get your opportunity with Caleb Truex, man. Now, I know you can't look past... Jose Uz, uh, Uzcategui, 
Um, <laughs> but at the same time, do you look at that food uh, in which you will be possibly the mandatory? You probably are the mandatory, even though the first and second spots are vacant right now. Um, do you look at that food as an opportunity? Like, yeah, as soon as I get to see him, it's, it's on. <laughs> Well, I know I know that that is my next meal. You yeah. know, uh, if you want to put it in those terms, Jose Uzkatagi is a championship fighter. This yeah. is a championship fight, man. Yeah. So this is the fight I'm looking forward to now. It's not a it's not a fighter's job to look past uh, any opponent he faces, man. It's not and it's not it, it's really not wise to man. It's a right. um it's a beautiful thing to be confident to uh to express your talent and your skills and display them and think that you're on top of the world, man. But this is boxing, man. Anything can happen, man. We would all love to be walking around for me with his record, um, with his pizzazz, you know, um, and with, with, with his funk, with his funk. You know, he has a great attitude towards fighting, but that's not realistic to fight as most, for the most part, man. We're in there. If, 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 you're, if you're stepping in the ring for a championship fight, chances are, um, the guy that you're stepping in with, he's just as hungry as you. He's just prepared and just as ready and he's just as equipped, man. Right. Um, the true talent in those fights, it has to stand out. So I'm not looking past Caleb Truex at all, man. Um, I'm not looking at him. I see him as my next meal, the next opportunity that I have to the plate. But as far as I'm concerned, this fight right here is the championship fight, and I believe I'll reign after that, man. Continue on. Continue on. Word up, word up. All right, so you you got Virgil Hunter in your corner now. Um, uh-huh. I know you're training with Andre Ward. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you got to be having that man in the ring with you, man, for spawn. Yeah. He, yeah, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not actually, man. That would be great, though, wouldn't it? But um, <laughs> Jose Uzkatagi, he's nothing uh, like Andre Ward. So, honestly, oh, no. man, unless Andre Ward would adapt his style, then I wouldn't get that same fight. No you know, I have some good guys on the farm right now. I'm in there with Fon Faro, who I believe is honestly better than Jose Uzkatagi. He's okay. definitely bigger. He came in at 220 when we first started sparring, mm. and uh, he's dropped his weight. He's dropped down in weight significantly, man. He looks great. He's been working great. We're doing 12 rounds tomorrow. Him, him. Um, we have a smaller fighter in there. He's a bronze medalist in the O12 from the 12 Olympics uh, from France, and we have Kia Chocolate as well, man. Okay. Um, and those are three guys I'll be working with tomorrow. So I'm getting the work that I need, you know. Um, and uh, as far as advice go, Virgil and uh, Andre are there to uh, give me any advice that I need to hear, you know. So uh, I'm getting everything I need this camp. Word up, word up. I actually like the uh, having Peter uh, Quillen in your camp. That's actually a pretty good, um, or let me say, emulation of uh, what Utagi yeah. able to do in the ring. That's a good one right there. Yeah. There's a couple things yeah, I want strong to guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's a couple things I want to shoot out at you, uh particularly what I seen in the first fight, some issues and I don't know if you remember uh the last time we talked, man, I I, I was upset with you last time <laughs> because of the the Andre mm-hmm. uh the um jeez, James DeGale fight, excuse me. And uh mm-hmm. we kind of went at it or I kind of went at you a little bit, gave you some uh what I had seen, some negative things I seen in that fight. Same thing here. Yeah. Uh, of course, you you were in the southpaw stance. You can definitely switch. Mm-hmm. You can also fight in the orthodox stance. Um, but from what I had seen, the southpaw stance wasn't really working to the to the effect in which that we would both uh, would have liked it to work. I saw that uh, Uzkatigi was was perfectly placing his foot on the outside. And uh, that kept you in range, and it kind of kept you off balance at times, man. And uh, also, mm-hmm. I've seen you retreating to the ropes a lot, and that gave Uskatigi opportunities to, to tee off on you while your back was on the ropes. So That did. Yeah. And uh, another thing is uh, you would throw, let's say, a jab to the body, and as soon as you do that jab to the body, which is excellent, this is something I try to tell a lot of the young kids they need to start doing because it stagnates your opponent mm-hmm. when you hit him in the solar plexus mm-hmm. like that. Um, when you did that, he would come over the top of your jab. And when he would come over the mm-hmm. top, he would throw a barrage of punches. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe I'm cheating mm-hmm. giving you advice. 
no, no. <laughs> if you're saying I, I've already peaked games uh, uh, weeks ago. Okay. Really a month, easy. No doubt. You know, I've watched the fight. I've watched the fight, like I said, five, six, seven times, man. Um, uh, one thing Uskatagi done really well is when I would shoot my, uh, I would shoot the one, two, and at the end of the two, I would kind of lean forward. Yep. And uh, he would come right, he would time me to come right over the top with his right hand just to line up the hook. Though the right hand was never a devastating punch he would throw, he just timed it really perfectly to be able to shoot off the left hook, and that, and that caused him to square up a lot. But I didn't take advantage of those situations. Instead, when I shot the shot, I was committed to getting back out to the outside, and I would, I would raise up and, and definitely do that the wrong way, man. Um, and that caused for opportunities like he did when he shot, shot off barrage of punch, standing in his face, yeah. you know, putting my back against the ropes and actually saying that I can watch that fight literally and laugh harder than you did. Than you, did. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or be as disappointed yeah. as you were. Yeah, you know when I look at the fight, man, and I, I I watch the fight now and I smile because I know the guy that I'm bringing to the fight this time around, uh, he won't have a chance. Literally, man, they, they'll be like, where was this guy, the first fight, you that's know? So uh, and that's what I'm looking forward to, man. It's not so much as um, 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 uh, getting this victory. It's regaining who I am, you know that 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 fighter who is elusive, who's quick, who's fast who knows how to use the ring, you know. Um, I let a lot of that go, but I went through a six-month camp, like I said before, man, because we couldn't get that fight set like we wanted to. And I had a really hard time finding the opponent, and um, it was just difficult setting it up, man. He has a hard job, man, a very difficult job in front of him, man. Um, so uh, it was hard for us to get it together. You know, in the last so – after four months and two failed training camps, yeah. literally I did two full training camps and and they both had fell off. Um, I've been uh, in three uh, training camps uh, that 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 fight. Right. So it really did number on me. And I'm calling Andre Ward. The last uh, month of the uh, of the camp of the the this is the sixth month. Asking him what do you think I should do because I've been reaching my peak and then falling again. Reaching my peak and falling again. And he advised me to just take two full weeks off, man, and then resume um, probably a week and a half. I mean, a two, a two, two and a half weeks after, man. You know, but I shouldn't do nothing, so I did. I rested, and I came in that fight, and I was a very flawed fighter. But like you said, after the fourth round, man, I really, really caught that groove, and a boy couldn't really touch me. I, I found my timing, um, and uh, I still was making mistakes, man. Things that I'm doing here now is it's really it's no comparison to what he'll see, you know, once we step in that ring, you know. Um, so that's what I'm more looking forward to, my performance, man. I know I'll get the victory. I'm not worried about the victory. If I want to move from the guy all night like I did when I fought Curtis Stevens, yeah. I can do that and get this victory. Yeah. You know, um, my feet are faster, my hands are faster, my reflexes are faster. I'm just overall a better fighter, man. So the key is this ring generalship, placing yeah. the punches where they need to be, being committed to, to um, uh, 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 in my attacks. And um and just I witness this guy, man. So I'm so looking forward to it, man. I'm not worried one bit, man. I'm very positive. I'm very excited. And I just can't wait to play my talent. Man, I can't wait to see it, man. That's what's up. I know for sure your footwork is much more superior, man. When you gave him angles, he was confused. You know what I'm saying? There was yeah, there was times my man was throwing a right hook <clears throat> and you would rotate. You know what I'm saying? My man would be left. <laughs> he didn't know what to do yeah. after that. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. There was a potential. And I, I can watch. I, I, I just, I, I really can't say. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I really no, can't stand even watching myself, and and just seeing all of the pointless opportunities that I gave the man over and over again. That's what this whole fight was about. The first time we fought, I just gave him too many opportunities. They mm -hmm. ceased. Like I said, after the fourth, fifth round, they ceased. And um, unfortunately. In the mid, in, in the midst of a uh, uh, definite comeback, they had they said they had him two rounds before he uh, illegally hit me after the bell got disqualified. Yeah. Um, um, he wasn't touching me. My time was great, and I was standing too tall. You know, uh, literally, I did. I had so many flaws, and I still had him where I wanted him, man, which was not good. But um, so when I come in as the guy, I'm, as the fighter I am today, right now, you have a big problem on his hands, man. That's what's up. All I want to see, man, I want to see them faints. 
and I want to see that lead love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> hey, Andre. Go hey, ahead, Andre. Uh, just be, be cool. It seems like I know going back, going back um, in a fight with James DeGuess in, in this fight with uh, Ugatage, it seemed like you uh, started late, like you said, after the fourth round. What do you need to do to mm-hmm. avoid, um, you know, a late start? Because, like I said, once, you know, after the second round in both those fights, it seemed like the mm-hmm. momentum was, you know, definitely going your way. You was winner and you starting to, you know, right. turn the fight around. Um, what what do you need to do to, you know, jump out early, you know, get that momentum going from the first round so, you know, you don't want to mm-hmm. have to play catch up, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, the second half, yeah. you dominate, you know, the second half of the fight, but yeah. I know you want to do that early on in the fight. So what do you need to do mm-hmm. to, um, you know, set the momentum early? Well, you know, when it came to the game, first round was pretty much pretty good to me. Um, it was a slow start, nevertheless, but I know I won that round. And that second round, I was telling myself, man, don't let them put me on the mat. I don't even know why it was on my mind like it was. Cause I wouldn't think about his power or anything, never in the camp. I just understand why it was on my mind. And he put me in the mat. I got up off the mat and said, God damn, I got dropped. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, um, I think I think that I think that one right there, that was the whole cause of the whole fight that we ended up having, um, me and Gale. And uh, Uzatagi, man, he heard me with a, a a shot in the uh, in the temple, and uh, that definitely messed with uh, my in the equilibrium, and that definitely messed with my with my uh, stuff, with my stance. He was he was, he remained long. I remember him punching, throwing throwing a barrage of punches, and he was still missing, man. He yeah. was still missing, and I was hurt, you know. Um, so. But definitely, man, out the gate, man, I got to focus on the game plan and stick to it. That's just the key, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't not sitting up on my uh, on my uh, on my toes. Like, I make sure I stay low. And box this guy, man. Simply, it, it can go slow. To, I, I believe a fight doesn't start until after the first four rounds, man. So they can have you tied up. They can have you down one, down two. He has to finish those. He has to finish eight rounds after that. And I don't. I for one won't won't believe he'll be able to do so. You know, so um. Um, it's just definitely sticking to the plan from round one all the way into the end bell, whichever round that may be. Okay. 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 Let's talk a little bit about uh, the other guys in the division. Just just, just like a brief summary of what you think about them. Uh, I'll start with WBC champion David Benavidez. The, uh, I, I watched the highlights of his last fight, the one he just had. And uh, he has a hell of a jab, man. It's fast. Uh, he has fast hands. I believe he stands up too high. Um, he's a he's definitely a he's a B plus A minus fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, um, um, he has a lot to improve on, but he's young. You know, what I'm saying I believe he'll continue to do so as he progresses in his career. Um, uh, hopefully, I'll get that shot with him. Uh, 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 if not by the end of this year, the uh, the upcoming. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah, to that, man. It's some moves I plan on making, most definitely. But uh, I believe he's a good fighter, man. He'll get better with time. Okay. WBO champion uh, Gilberto Zerto Ramirez. Um, I only saw highlights of his fight uh, with um, Arthur Abraham, mm-hmm. the the fight that he had won for the belt. Um, So I couldn't tell you much about him. I know these guys are tall, man. That's enough yeah, they for are. both of them. So. <laughs> Um, um, they just gotta know how to use their height. That's what it's all about. When you when you got that height on you, man, you gotta know how to use it, man. Yep. There's no point in being a a bulldog fighter if you can tax the guy from the outside all day long. You know what's the point? Um, but um, uh, from what I've seen, the highlights that I've seen, that's the only thing I've seen. I believe he's a pretty good fighter as well. Okay. And then uh, I'll ask you about Caleb Truax, even though we talked about him a little bit earlier. Mhm. Um, Caleb Truix, man, he is, he's blessed to, to have that belt right now. He's blessed <laughs> to have that belt right now. I, I, I gotta say it, you know, <clears throat> um, and he put in the work to get it. He earned that belt. He has the belt and, uh, he's carrying the belt, man. So, um, uh, congratulations to him. But I believe when I step in there with him, that's a done deal, man. Um, he needs to enjoy that belt while he has it, while he is champion, or enjoy being champion while he is because he has the belt for the remainder of his life. Take care, Michelle. Uh, he has the belt for the rest of the remainder of his life. Um, but uh, I, 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 I know that it's only a matter of time before um, 
that 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 belt uh, is going. But I congratulate him, man, because he came into that fight with the right game plan and he executed, man. You know, so that's pretty. That's pretty much it. That's that's a hundred percent honest honest opinion. Okay. And then last but not least, you just saw uh, the supremely overhyped Chris Eubank Jr. lose to George Groves in the uh, semifinal of the WBSS. What do you think about George Groves? That's another guy, in my opinion, for your skill set, that's food as well. <laughs> Isn't that, um, and I've been saying the same thing about Chris Eubank my whole life. Yep. This is probably one of the worst fights he's ever had, and I, and I ain't seen a lot of fights. You know, but uh, I watched the last six rounds of that fight because I was actually working out at the time, and I ended up making it back home and just realized it was on because uh, it came on pretty early. And, um, I mean, Eubank is a wild fighter, man. We're not on Eubank right now, but um, I honestly don't understand what all the hype is about. Yeah. It was all just set down with George Groves. George Groves, he's a hell of a fighter, man. He, he, he beat Fox the first time around. They didn't give it to him. I agree. Second time, he... I'll put him on the mat, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, but overall, he's still a good boxer. He's still a good fighter. I mean, he's definitely a a B fighter, a B fighter. You know what I'm saying? He has the potential to be an A fighter, you know what I'm saying? But um, it all depends on how he continues to progress, uh, how serious he takes in the gym, which I believe he's taking seriously, man. Um, he knows how to last, his most, uh, I, I believe that as well. He'll bring the fight when he needs to, but if he does, just like in the Eubank fight, um, he went, it, I believe it went to a round because George Groves allowed it to. He didn't right. capitalize on the mistakes that uh, Eubank was making. Man. He was throwing all wild hooks. He was going to drop the one-two right down the pipe and put that boy right on his back. You know, um, but uh, so he might be a little submissive, but other than that, George Groves is a hell of a fighter. I've always liked that guy. I work with him, and uh, – I think he'll do pretty good. I'm not sure who he has in the finals, though. Who is that he, he'll be fighting in the finals? Man, it might be. It's going to be between Jurgen Bramer and Callum Smith. So, oh, okay. Wow. I'm not wow. big on Jurgen Bramer I myself. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I heard Callum Smith. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Callum Smith is all right. You know, Cat from the UK. He, he's pretty decent. He's actually, um, that's the guy I was supposed to fight your brother. Um, Anthony. Yeah, right. Right. Mm-hmm. He he I'm, actually I'm is not, a. I'm not sure opinion. why that fight didn't go down. So you remember why? Well, well, well. Why didn't that fight go down? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Well, I, I know. No uh, Callum Smith is pretty much the UK version of Badu Jack, and I remember when we talked to Anthony as. Mm-hmm. As, as brutally honest as I am, I told him, I said, man, that's a tough fight for you. He's he's literally the mm. UK version of Badu Jack. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But, um, mm. yeah, that, man, that's that's going to be a decent little final if he gets past Jurgen Bramer, man. I actually had Callum Smith winning the whole thing. But, um, oh, okay. Looking, yeah. at, looking at 168, though, man, it's a wide open division. I've been rooting for you yeah. since the fight that you mentioned, which was mm-hmm. Curtis Stevens. I actually watched you fight uh, Gennady Golovkin in the amateurs, and uh, I thought you actually won that fight. <laughs> but um, yeah. and uh, you know, I've been rooting for you for a long time, man. We 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 almost there, brother. <laughs> are we? Are we? I'm glad I got the support, man. But uh, like you say, man, this division is wide open, man. Um, I've, I've, I've said this probably a couple of days ago, man. I see myself catching a few of these belts before I go in and tie it up. I hate the gloves myself, man. So I'm looking forward to what the future brings, man. I'm, I'm definitely honed in, man. And um, I'm, uh, I got my eyes for the prize, man. So I can't wait to see what 2018, 19, and 20 brings for me. Word up. All right, big cool. Hey, hey, Andre, I got a, my one last question. Um, I did a video mm-hmm. dissecting um how horrible a fighter. No disrespect to no fighter. I respect all fighters, but how horrible um uh, a fighter Chris Eubank Jr. is. And I mentioned um your era. I know you know y'all ain't old, but I mean the Super Six era. In, in my video, um, well, I said that yeah, we're uh, today's today's super middleweights, you know, really don't compare to you, Andre Ward, you know. Mikhail Cash, Lacar, Frotch, Arthur Abraham. Um, maybe you can throw in uh, Ramirez and uh, Benavidez, but that's it. And one of my loyal subscribers said that uh, he felt that um, both 
Ramirez, I think Junior, Chris Eubank Jr. and um fucking Benavidez uh would beat you in Warden. My reply to that is I, I didn't think they would they could fuck with y'all, you know, being honest in y'all prom, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, at your prom, mm-hmm. but you know, when you was, you know, back a few years ago. What do you think about that? What do you think about your class of the Super Six uh yeah. uh super middleweights compared to the top four guys uh two K just mentioned to you? Um I, I I would I would definitely have to uh go to Ross who just went. Um they're good fighters and the fans along with them, they're gonna be just as great with them because they're so new. I mean look how flashy uh Benavidez looked when he knocked down uh Medina, the way he the way he saw Medina. You know what I'm saying? It was something to see, man. You don't see those kind of knockouts too often, man. So that hyped him up really, really well. But then he went on to the next fight, which is the rematch. I mean, which, which was the first fight between him and this guy that he just fought. And uh, we saw a lot of flaws there, man. Uh, um, he's, he's good He's good if you're standing there. He's good for you if you're standing there. I mean, he can get his punches off if you're standing there for him, man. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't compare the super, to the Super 6 today. If we were to do it again, if we were all in, our, in the same era, uh, they'll be one of the first ones out of my book. That's what I think, yeah. I'm especially you, you know, Kessler and, and Ward, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just the skill wise and be able to move and box, I just think it would be too much for a guy like Ramirez and, you know, Benavidez. But that's I just wanted to get your thoughts, man, because when he said it, I was like, you know, they good fighters, but you know, y'all were Olympians for a reason. Yeah, that's right. Most definitely. Take nothing away from the guy. He can fight, man. And I wish him the best, man, but that's something I'm def- that's someone I'm definitely looking forward to in the near future. I want to close up my career with excellent work, man. Um, some notable names. Um, and the more he builds, the more noticeable he'll be, man. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Definitely. 2K? Nah, man, that's it for me, man. It's, it's always a pleasure to talk to Andre Durrell, man. He's one of the the, uh, the good guys in the sport, very humble. Um, I talk to a lot of different boxers, trainers. Um, managers, etc., and, and uh, he's one of my favorite to talk to, man. Big ups to him, and good luck on March third, my brother. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you. No exactly, man. Hey, thank you for taking the time out your busy schedule to join myself in two K. Like he said, we wish you the best of luck. We'll be tuning in live on Showtime on um, March third. Good luck, man. And, hey, after you get that victory, we can do this again. Hell yeah! All right, most definitely. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right, family. Mm -hmm. My man, take care.